Okay, let's go ahead and get started here. Sorry for the delay. Uh, today, we are going to walk through the process of creating a uh, continuous integration pipeline with Eclipse, Git, and a local copy of Jenkins. Uh, there's lots of videos around uh, with people doing this a similar pipeline using GitHub. Um, and Jenkins hosted in the cloud. But what I wanted to illustrate today is doing that same thing on a local machine, uh, potentially with no internet access whatsoever. So we're going to fire off a build in Jenkins triggered by a local commit to a Git repository. Uh, we're going to do that using a post commit, post -commit hook uh, in Git. So let's start by launching Eclipse. Already got a job here in Jenkins. But um, we've got Eclipse loaded here. I am going to start a brand new project. So we've got a couple of files open here already, but I'm going to start a brand new project. A new Maven project. And we'll call our new Maven project. Uh, what will we call our new Maven project? We'll call it um, local commit and build. All right, so essentially what we're going to do in our local commit and build is exactly the same thing that we've done here before. We're going to create a really basic uh, test class. Just a new JUnit test case. We'll call it echo test. No need to uh, do anything new and exciting here. We're basically just going to build a, a simple test here that looks for an expected value of <laughs> hello world. Keep it simple. All right. So as long as the value that we get back, the actual value that we get back is the expected value that we pass in, then everybody's happy. And we're going to use assert equals passing a string. And should get expected value that we expect to get, then expected and actual. So that's our test. Now because we're doing test driven development here, we don't yet have the class under test. So we're going to let the code generation tool here uh, create it for us, create class echo. Oh, yes, please create my class echo. want it in source test. Oops. We want it in source main. And for this demo we'll just leave it in the default package. But now there we have our echo class. We go back to our test method, the echo or rather our test class. Our echo method doesn't yet exist. So again we're going to use code generation to create that echo method for us. And our echo method here is returning a null. I'm just going to copy the expected and make it return expected so our test pass. Or, you know, just for kicks. Let's go ahead and hop back to our test class and run it and see it fail. Save our files. All right, so there's our failing test. Our test fails Oops. 
because we should get hello world, but what we got was null. And that's because we have not yet fixed our method to return expected instead of null. So now it returns expected. We can run our test. And this time everything passed with flying colors. Beautiful. All right. So now that we have our project working great, our local commit and build, let's then go ahead and add that to our local Git repository. Create a repository. Actually, we're going to create a repository in our local git folder here which is on c drive git and we'll call this local commit and build all right and into that folder where we have that local commit and build before we save anything here we're going to run over to that folder and we're going to add a um, post commit. Uh, I guess we can't, so, uh, the folder does not exist yet, so let's go ahead and commit these files. And commit. Uh, if we go back over, oops. Sorry, I got too many windows open here. <laughs> but uh, back in our echo class here. If we commit this. Oops. Which we've already done then we should be able to find our files. In our local git folder. There we are. So there are our files. And go to our git folder, we're gonna add a post commit hook. By adding a new file, text document, post commit and delete the extension. Yes, we're sure we want to change it. And we can edit that file and into that file. We'll paste our standard URL here, but we're going to use the folder name local commit and build. So this is using the git plugin in Jenkins. So we have the path to our Jenkins, uh, our local Jenkins host, the git notify commit API, and then we're just passing it the URL 
to our local Git repository that we want it to pull the uh, source from to build. All right, this in our Bash script that we're using for our post commit hook. So we'll go ahead and save that. And now that we have that post commit hook added into our Git repository for our local build and rather local commit and build project in the dot git subfolder under the kick hooks folder we've added our post commit hook our post commit bash script to use curl and navigate out to Jenkins and fire off that build for us now at this point we have not created that yet so let us go to our Jenkins dashboard we're going to create a new job and our new job is going to be called local oops, Build and commit. All right, did I get that right? Let's make sure. Local commit and build. Got it totally backwards. So, local commit and build. All right, we're going to make that a freestyle project. And we're going to need that URL to the Git repository. So, let's jump back here to local build and commit. And over here, we're going to say this is git, and our repository is here. And our build trigger, we're going to have it uh, pull source control, but we're not going to set a schedule. That basically just means it's going to use the git plugin to look for uh, any remote requests sent by the URL to uh, have it build this job. Now we're going to add a build step here to invoke top, top level Maven targets and we're going to give it the path. We're going to tell it we want it to run tests, but we're going to give it the path to our repository and uh, that palm file. Uh, we'll just go back and double check that path. Local commit and build. Local commit and build. And there's our palm.xml inside the repository right there. Our local git repository. So just for kicks, we'll copy that and paste that path in here. Make sure we don't have any fat fingerings or typos. All right, that ought to do it. Call it good and save that. And uh, we will do a build now just to make sure that our build paths and everything are set up properly before we try to invoke an, uh, a triggered build on our post commit. Oh, red, bad, blue, good. Let's see what happened here. Let's look at the console output. What do we got? Oh, we forgot to edit the POM file with the JUnit dependency. All right, no worries, no worries. Let's go back here. We'll edit our palm. And for dependencies, we'll add a dependency. Group ID is JUnit. Our artifact ID is JUnit. And version is, was it 4.12 I think we're on? And scope is test. Save our POM file and we will commit this change and date POM will be our comment and we'll commit that change. Let's jump back over here to Maven and you can see that triggered a build for us automatically with our post commit hook. And hey, look at that blue good, red bad. So we got our post commit hook fired off our build and this time our build was successful because we remembered to go in and update our dependencies and allow our JUnit tests one of one to run and pass. So uh, in summary what we've done here in this short little demo is create a very basic um, Maven project in Eclipse 
our little Maven project here just had a test class called Echo Test, uh, where we ran a simple um, echo method that echoed back the same value that we passed into it. In this case, it was hello world, was the value that we expected to be echoed back from us. And we compared that expected value with the actual value that was returned. And since we did get uh, hello world back, this test passed. Um, obviously, our Java class, all it does is accept a string in a parameter called expected, and it just echoes back or returns that same string. So our test passes. Um, key point here, though, is we created a oops, that's not it. we created a post commit trigger here, and our post commit trigger basically fired off uh, our build trigger in the git plugin in our local instance of Jenkins. Uh, this is a different one, so the path doesn't match up. But essentially, we put the path to our local repo, and that's what allows Jenkins to fire off the build on our local repo without having to pull GitHub or some remote repository. Now, obviously, in production, you'd want to have a more centralized uh, repo for shared integration tests. But this is a way we can fire off a build locally really, really easily. All right, that's it. That's all. Thanks for watching.